We're here at the Vermont Yankee Nuclear Power Plant in Vernon, our 129-acre site. And today, we're going to take uh, Josh Stiltz and Chris Garofolo, reporters with the Brattleboro Reformer, on a tour of the plant. A rather unique tour uh, because of nuclear security since 9-11, while it is not prohibited to do public tours, um, we have not uh, done very many at all, mostly for emergency officials, uh, for folks in, uh, in legislative uh, capacity or state government, but the general public, uh, by and large, um, it's just too difficult because of nuclear security. Uh, but today, there's actually work going on inside the plant. The plant is at 100% power, 628 megawatts electric on the New England grid. The plant is usually operating at 100% power. But today, we're going to look uh, on the turbine deck where we generate electricity at about 22,000 uh, volts. Then it's converted to uh, uh, 345,000 volts going out into the New England grid. So we'll tour the turbine deck. We'll go inside the reactor building, which is secondary containment around the reactor, and uh, see some of the safety systems, the redundant safety systems, including uh, the hydraulic control units that control the uh, control rods uh, in the plant and then we go to what's called the 345 level, that's the refuel floor at the top of the reactor, actually stand on top of the reactor at full power and understand uh, our operations department and radiation protection are actually doing some fuel moves, that spent fuel pool that's in the spent fuel pool. So we'll actually see them verifying um, the bundles of fuel of which there's 2,962 in the pool and uh, we'll, we'll see them actually doing some work at Vermont Yankee. full power in 1971, March 21st, and um, we update our standards as the standards are updated, so it's not like we're living to 1971 standards, we live to 2008 standards. Um, we test systems, components, logic, those kind of things on a regular basis, either monthly or quarterly or annually, and if components um, meet their standards for testing, and that's today's standards, then we consider them satisfactory. If they don't meet today's standards, then we will replace them or enhance them. Uh, this is considered our 9-3 panel. It's our emergency floor cooling systems. And then uh, as we circle around the control room here to our left, we'll have the 9-4 panel, which is uh, a little bit more of our emergency floor cooling systems and also our, our recirculation system um, here at the plant. And as we move to our left here, this is the main control panel in the control room. It's called the 9-5 panel, and it's actually the full core display for the uh, reactor. It shows all our rods uh, and how many we have withdrawn. It shows our level on the digitals. It also shows our reactor pressure. Those are our three critical parameters here that are monitored by the control room operators. As we slide over to our left a little bit more, we have our 9-6 panel, which is our feed water system, our condensate system, um, and some of the what we call balance of plant systems. And then over to the left here is the 9-7, and that's our mainly our turbine systems in the plant. And then last but not least, the last panel over here on the left is the 9-8 panel, and that's all our electrical systems. So we have uh, two operators in the control room at all times. We uh, have two senior operators in the control room at all times, and we also have a, a shift technical advisor here in the control room. And they're constantly monitoring the panel. You can see from the control panels that um, some of the switches have different colors to designate exactly what they are, like some of the yellow switches are, are pumps. Um, some of the white switches indicate steam. And um, the blue switches and black switches are valves. I like the yellow.
looking at the plant's generator. The plant today is at 100% power where it usually is. Today's uh, net is about 628 megawatts that's out on the grid to Vermont and uh, the New England states. And as we go around, you'll see the high-pressure turbine and two low-pressure turbines that spin a rotor, stainless steel rotor, that obviously turns the generator and makes electricity. We're making electricity on the generator, 22,000 volts goes outside. You saw that huge output transformer out uh, in front of the plant. That steps up the voltage to 345,000 volts from there out into the uh, supercharger grid. And uh, the electrolysis. So what you're looking at, high pressure turbine, if you can see that huge pipe on the right, that's one of the four main steam lines coming from the reactors. That's the size of them.
underwater, it's perfectly safe. operation fuel pool is 30 feet by 40 feet by 40 feet deep. So you can see the racks that are holding the individual bundles of fuel. They have handles on the top. Temperature of the water is about 85 degrees. That's what it's kept at all the time. The water is an incredible shield against radioactivity. This is the moisture separator pit. Really the only time it's used is during refueling. And when we're refueling, this whole cavity is flooded up with water to just below where you see uh, those ducts, as well as uh, all of these blocks, all of the shielding, and all of the parts that uh, compose the reactor in order for us to get to the fuel, which is about 60 feet below us, have to be removed. So all of these 30-ton shield blocks, um, the dry well cover, the reactor head, steam dryer, the moisture separator, all of those parts have to be taken off with a huge crane so that we can get to the fuel. We change out 120 bundles of fuel every 18 months. So we have to take out 120 bundles out of the reactor, put them in the spent fuel pool, and then from the spent fuel pool bring 120 new bundles of fuel and put them in the reactor. So moisture separator kit is where we put huge parts. They are radioactive, so they have to be uh, underwater. So this whole area is flooded up 